Hello and welcome to another edition of The Punter. Great to have your company for another journey through the murky world of the weekend sporting activity. We've got the experts that are going to make it a little bit clearer for you and a fantastic weekend in prospect. It's going to be a really fun one, so uh, stay tuned. You'll get some great advice, some people that are really on form at the moment. With me in studio, Russ Wiseman from Sporting Bet. Hey, Russ. Hey, Nick. Uh, Neil Channing, our punter, who's turned the corner. I've, so, I've more than turned the corner. I've kicked on. Nick. That's it, you've kicked on. And Alan Alger from Blue Sky, didn't have a corner to turn. You've <laughs> been on it since we started this show. Only on this programme. So. <laughs> oh, OK. <laughs> They're the ones to listen to. No yeah. better place, though. <laughs> <laughs> we'll also have Flash Gordon Watson and Nigel Seeley, our very own betting butler as well. But let's recap on last week to start with. Maybe a slightly quiet week betting-wise, but we... In terms of if you watch this show and took the advice, had a great week, I think. Yeah, I mean, the boys actually will move on to their bets. Some really good advice, just from a, a layers point of view and a, and a betting point of view. Obviously, Premier League football still by far the biggest uh, kind of event to, to play on. I think we identified, all of us here, that there may be one or two sides that might fail and dump those big accumulators, didn't we, guys? And, of course, yeah. that happened. Liverpool, again, not doing the business. Heavy odds on shots against Stoke. And, of course, Wolves uh, denying Spurs as well. And, and yeah, It was a very, very good weekend, I have to say, for from a layer's point of view and uh, we'll move on to, to Swansea in a minute but I think that, that makes it difficult for punters Nick when, when they like to play those kind of uh, doubles and trebles when the big teams are failing like that Yeah it looks so easy on paper and then the games are played and yeah. it never really goes that way uh, Neil you had a Really good week. I did have a blinding week, actually. Yeah, I laid uh, I laid Liverpool. I laid uh, I laid Spurs when they were one 0 down. Uh, I got so I did quite I did quite well on the football generally, uh, and um, NFL that was brilliant. Oh <laughs> God, I was in I was in heaven. Knee deep in big bundles. Oh, of cash. so good. And I, I, Sam Fran, I think I mentioned on the show. I hope I did uh, mm. that uh, <laughs> they're going to win the Super Bowl. I, I pressed and pressed and pressed. Uh, no greening up here. I, uh, I, I was during the game uh, as Green Bay were looking like they might, might be in some early trouble against the Giants. I, I went in again, and uh, I've, I've been going in even more this week. I think 130 is uh, is a good price. Excellent. We'll talk more NFL later on. And Alan, you're on fire. Yeah, not, only, not only do you get an <laughs> apology about Arsenal from a certain someone, maybe. I hope so. I do hope so. But also yeah. your uh, lower league tips came. Oh, Alan, Wrexham Tamworth. Thank you, yeah, mate. You go. God bless you. I was very confident about Wrexham. Um, not, I mean, not so confident about Swansea. I was just more or less discussing the fact that people were overrating Arsenal in that particular game. And yeah. um, I know a clip of that's hit the, hit the web and about 500 views and plenty of views from irate fellow Arsenal fans on there saying that I'm... Uh, disrespecting Arsene Wenger, but... Um, well, you are. <laughs> you actually are. <laughs> Sorry, I've just seen a picture of me as a dragon flash. Yeah, up well, this is the most important thing that happened last week, which is, this is not just a picture of some mascots. That's you, right? That is me. You look lovely. In that red costume. Yeah. Um, Fits well. That, that was actually two weeks ago at the first game, but I did dress up again on Tuesday, uh, sorry, Wednesday night in the rearranged replay. Is that, is that you in the Brighton. pink brass on the left? <laughs> <And>, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's Gully uh, and two of other helpers. Obviously it's at, Gully, uh, of course. Two, others Why help, two other helpers at, uh, at Brighton. Very good. That's, that's the last time I'm doing it. That's are they wonderful. unlucky at the Reebok, do you think? Or? Um, the replay, they, they, yeah. they, were, they were really unlucky, uh, Wrexham. I think they, they held their own and probably were the better team for large portions of the game. Went to a penalty shootout and just one missed penalty was the, was the difference between the sides. Yeah. Good. Well, a fantastic tip. You've got another one this week is good. Um, well, I'm just looking through. I mean, I've, I've got one on racing and one on the lower league and one on the Premier League. Excellent. So go we'll for get to those. Yeah. Uh, now, also on form, well, he's been on form since we started the show, actually. Our other tips are Gordon Watson Flash, who uh, I think went four or five this week, which if you add it up for since we started the series, he's gonna, he must be something like 28 of 32 Incredible. or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very good. Amazing say that. record he's got. Uh, Flash, are you there? I am, I am. I'm eating a little bit of humble pie. Alan, you are my master. <laughs> 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 Just you on know, Arsenal. You've got to admit when you were wrong, and all through the game I'm thinking, oh, I've got seven days, basically. <laughs> 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 oh, well, it's big of you to but, have been. I'm happy with the uh, Green Bay going out, and uh, happy with the, pay, the Patriots doing the business, so... Obviously, uh, I'm still flying on the uh, NFL. Yeah. Well. Uh, yeah. Four from five, we've got lucky because I actually did put seven up and uh, just some glory, I've got six out of seven. Flash, I've got to say, your, your Championship League One and League Two stuff is different class. Yeah, it's so, um, unbelievable. Never mind the apology because, really, I mean, what is it 28 out of 30? Something I, like that. I did it must that. Be, must, be around, must, be, must be around. Must be around. Yeah, yeah. More than Flash. 
Fantastic. I mean, yeah. I just find that I just find the Premiership and the Championship in general is quite traffic, to be honest. I mean, they've got a lot of experience. Obviously, I've played in both the division, and anyone can beat anyone in, in any given week. Whereas I find that the form sides in the lower two divisions, they genuinely do win their home games. And, and there's other sides that just cannot win on the road, so mm. I just try and cherry pick really. What well, I like about Flash's tips is he always identifies a team that are out of form and, and you don't want to be on, regardless right. of the opposition, and then you're always getting value because it's not so much focused on the on the one that you're actually backing in the game. Great stuff. Well, thank you so much for that, Flash. We'll get more tips from you later in the show, of course. Uh, also, uh, Nigel C, our betting butler, is on the line. He's in terrible Nigel, form. Nigel, we, we need to pick you up, I think. <laughs> I don't know if it was Curry. <laughs> uh, I, I did say Newcastle were a better weekend last did, weekend. Yeah. And I did, I, did, I did travel 12 hours to go and watch one of the worst games. 4, 4.30 best. in the morning, I was watching some guy called Russell in the fifth set. Marvellous. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Chad. I, I backed Wrexham. I laid Arsenal, thanks to Anna, thanks Al. Uh, the Sealy family can eat this week. Uh, I, I, I laid Liverpool with my own personal opinion. I backed Newcastle. But I've done it all in and more in about four or five tennis matches. <laughs> <laughs> I've had five tennis matches go to a fifth set and done me up. One this morning as well. Oh, yeah, that one this morning, I did that. Three sets and done me up as well. So, yeah. <laughs> well very, very bad on tennis. You got, you're halfway in the Australian Open, so you still turn it around. So we'll do that in this show and hopefully get I thought some... you said I was halfway to Australia. I'm halfway to Australia, Australia, yeah. Travel card. <laughs> <laughs> that would be impressive technology if you were halfway to Australia, to be fair. Um, let's get into this week, because there's a lot going on this week. We'll start with the big football tournament that's kicking off, the African Cup of Nations, which perhaps, you know, three or four runnings ago might not have attracted much interest. Now in this world of multimedia, it's a decent-sized betting heat, isn't it? I think I, I love this tournament. Absolutely love this tournament. I, I used to price it up when I, when I used to be a trader. used to enjoy doing it. Um, I have a philosophy and I think it's paid out in five of the last seven tournaments that you, you focus on the North African teams because the intelligence and discipline in defending is so much higher than that of the West African teams. And everybody seems to focus on the West African teams because you've got the likes exciting. of Drogba and, right, and the yeah. excitement. Mm. But as soon as it comes down to those very important quarterfinals, semifinals and the final, those one-off games towards the end, you have to rely on your defences, and that's why Egypt have won it the last two years. Um, an amazing thing about this tournament, how many international tournaments do you approach when the last two finalists are not even in the yeah, tournament? Egypt amazing. and Cameroon yeah, right. are not here. That's Ivory Coast incredibly well backed, but I would be back in Tunisia and Morocco each way. They're both in the same group. I, I expect them both to qualify from that group. When they get through, one of them will likely face Ghana, um, who have got plenty of injuries, plenty of doubts about them. I can see their second favourites there, but they're weak second favourites. I think Morocco and Tunisia, you could get... Well, I, I think you'll definitely get one of them in the semi-final. It'll be a miracle if you don't get one of them in the semi-final. But I actually think you'll end up with two of those in, in either semi-final and a very good chance of having them both in the final. Let's have a look at uh, the prices for the African Cup of Nations, shall we? And there's a couple of little anomalies. Russ, your firm's big on a couple of teams, which is quite interesting. Yeah, that did spook me when I saw the prices, actually, Nick. And I think Carl's put pinpointed it as well. I mean, I think it's just a, a, a disparity there. Obviously, Morocco and Tunisia were 10-1 to 1 and, and 11-1. to 1. I mean... Again, I think the, the view there, that is, there's a lot of value around, but I think a lot of firms are pushing pro teams out now. We're not yeah. seeing enormous yeah. amounts on the outright book, but this tournament, certainly in the last couple of uh, occasions, Nick, has really been focused on very defensive games. People who are bearish of goals, I don't like a lot of goals. You don't see a lot early on. Uh, but teams are very, very well set up. The organisation and the athleticism of these teams really doesn't lend itself to, to high-scoring games, and they don't want to give a lot away, and they take it so seriously. Every game mm. is competitive as well. I think we're in for, for, for a good time, but certainly people like uh, the Channers of this world and, and, and the Butler, they certainly would be making hay in this kind of tournament if it, if it follows suit and follows the kind of conditions we've seen the last two times long. Uh, is he right in his assumption, Nigel? Is that the way you go? Yeah, I mean, the first thing you want to say is I'm, out, I'm looking at the, the map now, trying to find which teams are North African and which teams are West African. That's the I'm trying to suss out. Uh, but I mean, the dog, the dog likes that one. But uh, the, 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 the thing is about it is that the, the, the total goals line, it gets down to such low marks, isn't it, Russ? I mean, yeah, last season, really these low. games were going off about 1.6, 1.9 total goals, which were totally unheard of. So there was absolutely no value to go under the, the prices. I mean... You would have you would have you would have paid uh, you would have won by doing so, but the price was so low that you had to really be only uh, going over, which 
which we I can't do, and nor can Chandler's do, I don't think. But on, on, the, on the outright of the no, outright market, for, for us, the only team that we've seen any support for for serious money, and, and basically this money was coming in two or three weeks ago, was for Senegal. I mean, we saw orders for them at eight and seven to one. I don't know what price those guys in the studio are about six, but they're not short on those kind of prices. And that, that to me, was the team that everybody allegedly sort of footballing brains were trying to back. So if the money was, was going, that was where the early money was going on. Ivory Coast obviously looked at the team to beat, but uh, as we've seen in this competition, that the favourite has a history of uh, slipping up on, the, on many occasions. Neil, any interest from you in this well, tournament, or do you leave it I alone? know you said it was a busy week this week, and uh, most people come with an iPad. There's, I have uh, notes I've yeah. made this week. Uh, I've had some bets, actually. Um, normally, I would wait and listen to these fellas on something like this, uh, but I managed to come up with something off the top of my head, and I'm glad that Alan said it, because I backed Morocco mm. at 10 to 1. I thought that was a big price. And I think the Racing Post have uh, tipped them tipped today. Well. So yeah. um, I'm imagining, I think the, uh, Russ's uh, sporting bets 10 to 1, uh, is actually best price, uh, joint best price. So uh, that was probably going to be. Uh, Russ, you look like um, you sort of aged slightly. I didn't anyone, like that. When anyone <laughs> says, your, <laughs> anyone says your best price. Well, I've never enjoyed that word, those words, best <laughs> yeah. price. I've never enjoyed those words. Well, I think you're, you, 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 maybe Labrooks <laughs> might see a little bit more well, money uh, well, than sporting well, well, bet, Let's but, commit uh, to something and say that anybody watching the punts or anybody watching the show now will make sure the tenth one's there for them. Because okay, I think that's, that's, fair, that's a fair price. I think it's a fair tip as well. I think it's an open, open ton. But sorry. But uh, no, sorry. I was also going to say that, uh, you know, I'm interested because Nigel said to me last week, um, uh, we were chatting and he said uh, he, he's seen a bit of money for Senegal um, and some guy I was uh, I was reading on the internet was saying uh, Senegal you know the reason is because they got they got such good strikers you know they have uh, uh, Bemba, um, the, the Demba, Bar. Dem, Demba Bar the Newcastle fella um, but uh, this other guy uh, Musa Sal I think I think I've said it correctly the Lille um, he, he's the top scorer for Lille uh, in the French uh, first division in a division. difficult league to score as well uh, and uh, he's 16 to 1 to be top scorer uh, nice in thing. the tournament and uh, so I've had a sneaky little bit to win only I, I think Labros was 16 well Labros was 16 to 1 it's a good point Nigel it's a good point no Labros was 16 to 1 which was best price um, and uh, Labros were only doing first three <laughs> which I thought was a bit mean. Um, the other firms that were doing first four were only kind of 12 to 1. So okay. I, I went win Good only. Tips. I went win only. Good tips. Uh, well, we will follow the tournament, of course. I think, uh, it's, is it a couple of weeks or more than that? It's more than that, isn't it? Three, three, three weeks, I think it drags weeks. on for, yeah. We'll see if there are any market moves to keep you abreast of. You didn't have an African Cup of Nations betting strategy before you tuned into this show, did you? You've never had one, have you? <laughs> you got one now. Uh, we'll do the weekend's footy after this break. Welcome back. Time to take an in-depth look at the weekend's football. And it's a big weekend in the Premiership, at least. Super Sunday. That's official, apparently. Uh, but it is a big one. We've got a couple of really big games and some other interesting betting heats as well. Going to see a lot of money this weekend, you'd yeah. have thought, on the football. Huge weekend. This is a really big weekend. I mean, there are certain certain weekends that obviously define the rest of the season. and We're going to see it this weekend, Nick, certainly. Arsenal, Man United, it doesn't need selling at all that game. Obviously, the, the freakish result from last time, I'm sure Al will have a view on this. We're actually seeing quite a lot of money actually supporting it for Arsenal to that game. Oh, really? But, I mean, from a bookmaking point of view, we'd like to see uh, sort of less than three and a half goals. I think most people will be playing exotic score lines and expecting another kind of freakish result. And of course, we've got this uh, Man City Spurs uh, rematch of where, where City obviously destroyed them 5 1 last time. If Spurs have got any aspiration for mm. the title, I think they need to get something out of this game. But they're the two, the two big games. There's a lot of other uh, very intriguing contests as well. And just uh, Alan, generally this weekend, you agree with Russ, expecting to see a huge amount of money, obviously, and also a lot of money on big scores? Absolutely. Those two live games on Sunday are huge. and. Um, I would say your man in the street, the general punter, wants to see goals anyway. Mm. If there's been history of goals in the game, like we've seen with the reverse of these two fixtures, then they'll, they'll latch onto that even more and totally agree with Russ. We'll, we'll see lots of high correct scores, lots of over three and a half goals, lots of both teams to score in the games. Right, OK. Um, Neil, you, does that give you an opportunity or do you still stay away from these big I'm Premier unlikely games? to have a bet in either of these games, actually. I think I'd, I'd, I actually am a little surprised that Man City are as big as 10 to 11 okay, well, let's, against let's Spurs. Get, let's get into um, that and talk but, about that. Uh, I, yeah, I mean, you say about me being bearish of goals and whatever. I, this is not a game. The, the Arsenal game is not a game I'll be rushing into to bet under. Yeah. OK, well, we're going to start with the title race. And so let's start with uh, Man City, Tottenham. Man City at home for this one. And obviously it's a huge game in terms of the Premier League, also be a huge betting game. 
Anything strike you about the prices? Well, I actually agree with Neil on this. I think Man City are probably a bet in this game. Obviously, I've got involvement with Spurs just from as a, as a betting partner, sporting bet with them. So I, I do see quite a lot of them. Key thing really here is, is Emmanuel, Emmanuel Adebayo not allowed to play. Mm. And, and can Spurs have enough potency with the, the remaining attackers to actually do anything to damage, to damage Manchester City? I think they'll be massively reliant on Bale in this game potentially Lennon and Modric as well. I don't see Spurs really, really causing Man City that many problems and they really did run out of ideas badly in the second half against Wolves. That doesn't bode well for this. But if City play a, you know, an aggressive game, maybe it will suit Spurs from a counter-attacking point of view. But I tend to agree, agree with Neil. I think the blue square price 10 to 11. I think there'll be plenty of punters who will be prepared to take that, I think, on, on Sunday. Nigel, where are you on this one? Because obviously the counter-argument would be that Man City have got a couple of their best players missing. Yeah, I mean, the team is vital. Balotelli's a 50-50 for the game. Your company out, the Torres out. So, yeah, both teams are going into it probably under strength. But um, I do agree with the 10 to 11 being a big price, 10 out of 10 in the Premier League. The one thing about this game, though, is, um, you know, I always go on about under two and a half goals as, as does Channing. I, I take his point with the Arsenal Manchester United that game. I can, can only see goals in that game. But I think City Tottenham is going to be a very cagey game. I think Mancini... Uh, the big games, he goes very defensive. And I can see him going quite defensive in the game because he's lo losing the, the impact of the Torre brothers and the company. So he's got to be very tight at the back. And if you look at Tottenham's last seven games, I think all of them were reduced under two and a half goals. Mm. So mm. they've, got, they've, suddenly, they've suddenly changed their style of football. That's as, a great as, as, point, Nigel, because that is contrary to what people's perception is. I think. Exactly. I mean, that's, so this, this game here, well, I think you'll get decent value under two and a half I, goals I, because I, it I, is a title concerned, concerned, and, and the two of them will be very, very uh, to utmost to avoid defeat, I think, as well. So I think I'll it'll be very I'll negative. I'll tell you what I quite like on that view is I, I quite like to lay Tottenham to score in the game. I, I can see Man City you know, winning 2-0 or uh, you know, scoring early or whatever. It wouldn't surprise me that much, but I actually quite fancy Tottenham not to score. It's also a game challenge. If, if, if Man City go 1-0 up, it could quite easily go with old Italian-style football as under mm. Mancini, where he, where he just basically goes defensive, holds on to the 1-0 lead, and Tottenham aren't good enough to break them down because of the Adebayor of not playing. So I mean, they, I they, think, they I think even did that. It could be a decent bet to just, mm. just if Man City go 1-0 up, just say they're going to mm. shut up shop, because that's what he did all last season. He even did that against Wigan, a game which you know they, they yeah. were favourites to kick on and win by more. You're right. And they, and they did the same thing there, so I'd have to agree with that. Mm. OK, uh, let's move on to the other game, I think, uh, on Super Sunday, trademark. Arsenal, Man United, and of course the reverse fixture was 8-2 at Old Trafford. What odds is 8-2 this time? Somebody must have a special I'm somewhere. 8-2, eight, eight 750 I, I to 1 with I, us. I, I think I saw that's 600. That's pretty tight. I mean, I think I saw, I saw 600 <laughs> it's, it last year. It probably is, yeah. But, yeah. I mean, but it's, but happened, it's happened you, once. Yeah, but you look at this game, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's actually a fantastic betting game because, I mean, obviously we've all worked in the industry for a long time here. This is actually the one fixture that does always seem to generate goals, excitement. Uh, mm. It's great for turnover because it's, it's always an exciting game. And even it's pretty easy to price up, yeah, though, very, isn't it, really? Very, I mean, it's a formula price game. You don't worry about it. And also, looking at the prices, like... Can you really stand up and make yeah. an argument for one of the three prices being a brilliant value no. bet, the best bet on the football coupon of the weekend? So I think it, that's so why a lot of people... Sorry, Nick, on, excuse me. You know, I was just wondering if... So would a professional, a professional better might even stay away, even though it's the biggest game of the weekend? Because people at home won't understand that. I'll have it on in the background, and if something really uh, freaky happens, like someone gets sent off and there's a massive overreaction to that, then I'll, I'll have a bet. But it's pretty unlikely I'm going to have a bet okay. at these and, prices. And what we've seen is, of course, is, is, the, is the explosion of in-play betting over last two or three years it's, mm. it's peak now it's still getting bigger it's actually a fantastic in play game for the very reason Neil said that even as a professional uh, you can there will be an incident within half an hour of this game something will happen to, <laughs> to spur it on but there'll be plenty of guys out there who bet the fives and tenor brigade He'll be uh, he'll be reacting to either goals, sendings off, you know, Wenger, Ferguson. There'll be something that happens to stimulate action. So that's why I think it'll be a, a volume game, not so much for the pros, but certainly for the the everyday punter. Alan, I could, I'm not sure whether to ask you as a bookmaker or an Arsenal fan. Uh, the the answer from our trading point of view is obviously that they've gone a best price Arsenal. I couldn't disagree with that. I don't have any input on our Premier League prices at all, right. but. Um, I disagree. I think uh, you're getting an opportunity to still latch on to this fact that Arsenal are not good this season. You know, that Manchester United should be odds-on favourites for this game. You might think that's At a completely Arsenal. ridiculous statement. It's a but bold I one. would say that if this game was played 100 times, Manchester United would win this 51 times or more. They should be odds-on. That's a completely wrong price. But, and there's a that, big... I'll yeah. tell you where the big but is. Arsenal have raised their game despite their poor form in the last few years for this one particular game when someone as good as Sir Alex Ferguson, he had to go at Arsene Wenger last week, I'm going to go have a go at Fergie. 
he sometimes respects Arsenal a little bit too much. He still, mm. maybe he gets locked into all this uh, over, yeah. uh, overrating of Arsenal and, and that they're actually good at the moment. They're not. And if he, if he actually latches onto that, he should do because, you know, they've beaten the mate too recently. Um, I think if he picks the right lineup, they should win and win comfortably again. Nigel, that's a big cool. statement from Alan. He thinks Man United should be odds on. What do you think? Well, I'm not, I'm not quite sure about that because of the, the latter point he made there. But I think there's one, there's a lot of, but don't think about this, both teams have got so many, so many injuries, including Arsenal. They, the list of injuries for them is unbelievable. The players away for the African Nations Cup as well is, is a big list as well. But for me, Arsenal's only chance is, is if Vermaelen plays. I mean, he's rated 50-50. If he plays in the side, they've got some chance. If they're going into this game without mm. the centre-halves, then they're in big, big trouble. And I think Vermaelen's a huge blow to him. So, for me, if you see, if he's not in the team sheet, then there is no doubt that Manchester United will go up a lot shorter than 6-4 to four for this game. I think he's that crucial for them. Fascinating stuff. So, just a quick word, uh, chaps, on how this might affect the title race betting. Let's say both the Manchester clubs are upset. How much impact does that have on the market? Well, it'll have, a big, it'll have a big effect. I mean, obviously, if Spurs take the three points from, uh, from, from City, Nick, I think I ran about 10 to 1 Spurs at the moment. Yeah. I'd certainly think they'll be kind of 6 to 1, 11 to 2 if they did something big enough like that, back to where they were uh, last week. And uh, that will have an effect. And I think we were saying, you know, last week, if they'd have beaten Wolves, this game was lined up to be the one where they maybe, just maybe, become second favourites at the expense of. One of the one of the two Manchester sides, maybe even maybe maybe not folks, but we said about three to one, didn't we? Yeah, absolutely. And um, not the case. Anymore. That's not been lined up because mm. of their result against Wolves, so they've they've got to claw back a little bit again. But um, I think that will be key. And and don't discount the fact that Chelsea have got a, a game at Norwich, yeah, which right. could oh, put pressure beautiful, on all beautiful, of them. Beautiful segue. We'll go where, there. Where, I think. Uh, <laughs> Nor- where, where we'll have a big effect, Nick, is if oh, one on. Manchester team wins and the other team loses. Yeah. Then it's absolutely massive because then, but, then you, Manchester United could go and possibly favourites. Not, and how, would it, how would you? Nigel, how would you that's very dependent on though whether it's City that loses or, yeah, or it, because Arsenal winning doesn't do anything for the title. They're 150 no, no, to one. If, if, Manchester, if Manchester United win this game and Man City lose, I think Manchester United go marginal favourites for the Premier League title. That's the, the most. That's definitely that's definitely the most interesting the thing Tottenham because that, that it's not going to change that much unless that scenario comes up. I quite like that scenario to come up. So I quite like to lump a lot of money on City <laughs> under that scenario. Um, we must move on. Norwich Chelsea is an interesting one. Chelsea sort of look like they've got their act together, Nigel, but this is a potentially tricky fixture. Yeah, well, we've spoken about the perils of backing on zone shots in the Premier League away from home all, all season, and this is another one. I mean, they're four to six, Norwich are five to one. I mean, the, the, the question I asked myself is how would you bet this game if it was the second game of the football season? And I don't really think it would be that much difference of Chelsea. You may, you may have been eight to 15, you know, not, not massively different. And if you look at the way the two teams have started the season, that made Max Norwich represent a bit of value at five to one. I think I, I personally, on a personal note, I don't think that Norwich have enough about them to beat Chelsea because Chelsea can go and do a professional job. And what the, what he's doing there is replicating the form that Mourinho did, where he's winning games ugly and winning games one 0 just to get through this season and get you know get the team he wants. And I can see it going the same way. I think I think uh, Norwich on the Asian handicap plus a goal or plus one and a half is a great bet because I, I the way I've seen Chelsea play the last few weeks. Is he, he just wants to get win games, get points on the board, and it doesn't matter about the performance, just win them one nil. And I can see, you know, when Mourinho did this, everybody was playing whoever they played plus one and a half goals in the handicaps, with it, and, and they were get, getting the money. And I can see a very, very similar Chelsea, uh, Chelsea, Chelsea performance. Interesting way to approach the game. Yeah, I mean, it's just the, the one interesting point to this one was the last time we saw Norwich from a very public standpoint was when they played Spurs over the Christmas period. That's we, we don't really see an enormous amount of these teams, do yeah. we? And Norwich have been doing very well against the kind of the medium sides. However, Spurs that day they won two 0 They could have really put one on mm. Norwich in a bad way. It was a very one-sided game. However. I do think that this Chelsea team uh, are limited. Uh, we're seeing good money for Chelsea at the moment. They might squeak past the line, but right. I, I do think I, I do think though at this point in the season where we've, we've I think we've, the general consensus here, Nick, is that these are tight games. Uh, there's a, not much in it. I think you'd be prepared to lay eight to thirteen, three to five all day long about any team in the moment. It just doesn't seem to be that that clear cut a victory for Chelsea, certainly in their current form. Anyway, yeah, yeah I, cer- I certainly couldn't back Chelsea at, uh, at the prices on offer there, and I think. They are, they are a decent lay from a bookmaking point of view. Again, the draw's in our favour as well. Um, one note I would say on this game, Frank Lampard to score at any time. I think uh, 
Andre Villas-Boas has got to be reliant on Frank Lampard now that he's got the absentees with the African Cup of Nations. And you would say that that's a fresher Frank Lampard than we've had in recent seasons because he hasn't used him when he's had his full complement there. He'll take the penalties, he'll take the free kicks, he'll be involved. Frank Lampard to score at any time could be the best bet in this game. And what price is that? I think it's around 2-1 to one when and I looked at it this morning. OK, uh, good tip. Let's move on to the last televised game, which is Bolton... Uh, Gary Cahill as Bolton uh, hosting Liverpool. Uh, Liverpool keep being put on the TV, and I'm a Liverpool fan. And I don't <laughs> want to watch them, so I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why that keeps happening. Well, they're hard to work out, Liverpool. They're, they're well, very, they don't very score hard. goals. I mean, I mean that's I, the basic problem. I mean, we'll, we'll talk no doubt about this this FA Cup game coming against Manchester United, where I've got a very strong view that Liverpool will probably win that game and win it well. But I, I do think they are. They're, we're finding it hard now to make excuses for them week in week out. Apparently, I didn't see any of the game last week. They, it was the most disappointing they've been mm. this season, which is is a real blow for them because they just look as though. They're just about to, to go over the crest well, and get it right. But, but this is a bold team who are going down. There's so. an amazing stat of how many goals they've scored. I think oh. only two teams in the Premier League, this is from memory, have, have scored That's less right. than them. And such, it's such a incredible. big thing. And uh, Bolton have got an awful home record. But I think you have to take Liverpool on in this game. Yeah. Eight odds on failures out of 21 Premier League matches. Wow. Eight odds on failures. And this is a consistency that actually goes past last, over the last decade. Yeah, I mean, if you were going to yeah. start adding up all the games over the, the recent seasons, I think that average, just under 50%, would probably be maintained. Yeah. So mm. really, you have to take them on. Our traders just consistently will go best price Liverpool for any game. Okay, they get their fingers burnt in the bigger games that we mentioned last week, but you don't have to go odds on for those games. They're winning ultimate, at seven to four, fifteen ultimate to game eight. Races they so are. they are <laughs> they are <laughs> absolutely the bookmakers' friends yeah, for producing, true. in a nutshell, the kind of result we want on each game. Nigel, do you agree with all of that? Anything different to say, or no, is, agree, is it going too far? I know I, I do I do agree with it, but I think I think the the thing for me here is that Bolton are abysmal. I mean that that's that's the key mm. to this game. It's not how bad how bad Liverpool are. I think that their opponents are, are terrible, and without Cahill, they they've got ten times worse. I mean, if you took the, took the two sides, which one would I rather back? Despite all the history between Liverpool and Chelsea, I'd I'd rather back Liverpool in this fixture than take Chelsea against Norwich because I think Norwich are a, a lot better side than Bolton, and I think that uh, the Liverpool and Chelsea are probably on a par. Slightly, slight favourite, live Chelsea. So, uh, uh, what price are you guys? I can't see your picture. You, is it still four to six with any of you? Four to six with us, please. Uh, I, I, I don't think you'll be four to six come kickoff time tomorrow. No, I'll but on I, this game. I think there'll be money for this overnight, yeah, and I, I can see that. I can see them going off a lot shorter. Than yeah, our trade, our traders just deliberately go best price Liverpool in games like this, and when they've got the money in that they've got it to a level that they want they will cut it. So it's not a price that will last, but it's a price that's there for a reason. We want to mm -hmm. take the early money at best price on Liverpool for every game this season like this one. You know where to go if you want to back Liverpool. Um, just very quickly, before mm. we move off, Neil, a word on the big match from your point of view of this weekend in the Premier League. Yeah, well, I, I, first of all, I was close to sort of talking about Norwich because of the two... Don't do I that. Talk about the match. I'll say it really about. quickly. Of the two games, I think Norwich... I agree with, totally with Nigel. Norwich is a much better bet, I think, than Bolton of the two. But for me, the big value of the, of the Premier this week... I'll give you a couple of stats. Uh, if we looked at the table for who scores the most goals away, Blackburn would be fifth in the table. If we look at the table for who scores the most goals at home, Everton would be joint bottom. Why are Blackburn six to one to win away at Everton? It's an incredible price. Don't know, but it's say it quieter price. because <laughs> that's, that's just seems like a massive price to me in the that's Premier. Amazing and, I do want to make yeah, sure that that's not with us because uh, uh, it's, it's a kind of a general actually. It, yeah. It's not that hard to get. I mean, uh, uh, I, I think well, Blue Square are. It's funny uh, in one stat that just says it all. That one stat actually. I mean, Blue Square are only five to one. So there you go. You'll be all right. The quest, the quest for value lands on Blackburn this weekend. We'll see if they come in now. After the break, we've got a ton more sport to do. Some great horse racing this weekend. The Australian Open still going, and the NFL reaches its climax. You don't want to go anywhere. You're watching The Punter and I hope you didn't miss the last part because there was some fantastic football advice in there, really, really quality information. Go out and use it. Now we're going to try and do the same thing for the rest of the weekend sport right now and for the first time in a few weeks, some quality horse racing 
on the cars. The Victor Chandler Ascot is the big race. Good one, right? Terrific race, this one, uh, Nick. And this is actually the start of the, of the run-up to Cheltenham. I obviously don't make, want to make Cheltenham uh, the centrepiece of everything because these are good races in their own right. But this is a very, very good race. It all kind of uh, leads to the, uh, the sportingbet.com queen with the champion chase, actually. But this is, a, this is a great race. Great each way race. Neil's got some views that I strongly disagree with. But just talking about Finian's rainbow at the top there, Nicky Henderson horse, Mick Fitzgerald, who does quite a lot for us, uh, he's not un entirely convinced about that animal. And I'll tell you what, it's very rare that he'd be against a Henderson horse. And when, mm. you, when you've got the calibre of horses in there behind, I can, it really I can, does make I for a good battle race. I can tell you something about Finian's Rainbow. I actually did homework last night, Nick. Good I know man. you find it hard to believe. Good man. I sat online and I watched every single race of Finian's Rainbows on the tape from the start. Um, the horse jumps to the left. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and Ascot is a right-handed track. I, I actually really like Finian's Rainbow for the, the sport, sporting bet Queen yes, Mother Champion right. Chase. <laughs> uh, and it has been backed from about 10 to 1 into mm. about uh, 6 to 1 for that race, anti-post. Obviously, if it wins uh, tom uh, uh, tomorrow in the Victor Chandler chase, uh, it's going to shorten up. But, uh, uh, you know, two to one to win so this. So you think it's worth I opposing? And what, I'm, what are I'm you opposing, opposing it Also, with? the ground's going to be a bit sticky. And Finian's Rainbow is quite a classy horse. I don't think it's such a, a gutsy battle. Alf Roof, uh, for off was very impressive. And it's the um, presence of Alf Roof, actually, that makes it such a great race. But it's young such, novice, and, the, it, and the, it actually the, makes the, it a The best thing race. about this race is it's a brilliant each way race. I'm so lucky, and, and, and Wazo Dunui. Um, have basically been thrashed by these in the past. For Paddy uh, de Plastra has, has really had to come back after a you know, long layoff. Uh, Gourvain is a bit dodgy. I must admit, Summersby and Wishful Thinking are both also a bit dodgy. They both <laughs> give the odd bad race. So is this, is this um, like, which is the least dodgy contest? But the, these are the three. If you were going to look each way this at these know. prices, at the shape of the betting and the prices, you have to look at Summersby, Wishful Thinking and Gourvain. Gourvain throws in too many bad ones. Wishful Thinking has uh, tanked off in front in two mile four and two mile five races and then died. Uh, this is a two mile race. Uh, and uh, I, I really fancy Wishful Thinking. I think it must be in the frame. And I've, I've, I've basically spent the whole week tramping around betting shops, backing it <laughs> each way. Uh, I was kind of hoping that the race might cut up, cut up because if you back anti-post and it goes down to six or five runners, you're still on uh, you know, three places. And I knew for a certainty Wishful Thinking wouldn't be pulled out. Uh, so I, yeah. I, I've had a really quite decent uh, bet, and I'm and going you, in again. You yeah. disagree, no, we, right? no, we do a lot of agreeing on this show. Yeah, no, I mean probably too. But the much. disagreeing's more but, fun. I mean, it's about yeah. to start now. We have to start now at some point. Now mm. the reason I th I, I'm, I'm dead against wishful thinking, and the main reason being is that the last time I actually saw it was at Sandown in the Tingle Creek. In the Tingle Creek in a two miles, a very similar kind style of mm. race, and as Neil said, went flying off in front. It's had a breathing. It's had breathing wind trouble. Uh, that tends to suggest to me, Nick, that these horses probably don't get home all the time. I mm. think wishful thinking might be a great mm. win bet. I'm not entirely sure the each way bet is. You, a, got, you, is you, a, make, is a you make a reasonable point. I'm not trying to be. You make a reasonable point. point. They're, they're, it's not a risk-free enterprise. No. Richard Johnson, I think, is a bad jockey <laughs> in chases. He presents yeah. the horse badly at fences. Uh, it's not perfect. This bet. It's not like the best bet I've ever had. But in terms of the shape of the race. For me, we're betting in a six-runner race where there are doubts about Gourvain a, yeah. a lot. Summersby, trained by Henrietta Knight, gone at well, the game, this woman. I mean, yeah, she yeah, has yeah. no clue. Well, she, she well, doesn't listen, know. I, I think the best way to do it, mm. I mean, Al's going to have his own opinion on this, but I'll tell you what we should do here. I will bet you all the money in my pocket. Here we go. Match bet, which is, the, I think it's seven quid, actually. It's on the floor. Seven, <laughs> seven quid. I think uh, that Summersby in a match bet is a much safer proposition than wishful thinking. I'm, more I, I'm, I'm happy to take you on I'm that one. I think Philip Hobbs is a really good form. Yeah, Summersby's a horse without so a trip as well. So we're just drifting into slightly Sorry. illegal mm, betting enterprises. So um, Alan, save us. Anything else to add? Because we I've got to agree with everything that's been said so far, but yeah. if you weigh up everything that's been said so far, it points to only one horse in the race. Paul Nichols has won this the last mm. three years with a short price horse. He knows exactly what it takes. Arkle contender, Alpha Rov, I mean, I can't go as strongly as the Manchester United bet, but again, another price that looks completely wrong. Alpha of and Manchester United, uh, that's your weekend double. Get the first <laughs> part home. As well now. <laughs> get, the first, get the first part home on Saturday. I cannot believe the price Good. for this race. The, the Finian's Rainbow, I mean, uh, as you say, you know, uh, Mick Fitzgerald, uh, you've got to respect yeah. it. I actually love Finian's he's... Rainbow. I just think the, the, the right hand, left hand is a big factor. Yeah, I think and it's a the big ground. thing. But and the ground. I, Mick Fitzgerald is usually very bullish. When mm. he's not about a Henderson yeah, horse, I think you really need to take note. Um, Summersby, the question marks, wishful thinking. Gulvain has fallen. 
Um, Nichols, Nichols, horse is, Nichols horse is not, uh, not having a brilliant race. month. Everything. Everything. Very, 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 very good bay race. As you can hear, there are mm. different opinions. You need to form your own. I hope you can pick the bones out of that. Very quickly, because we mm. uh, have to move on from horse racing, there is the Peter Marsh. Uh, hey, Doc, anything in that or any other horse racing things you'd like to flag yeah. out? Um, well, we've got our sprint series, which continues with the division at uh, Lingfield again. So we've, that's been well supported by the trainers um, at the low end of the scale on the all-weather racing. Blue Square, that's the trainers. Blue Square yeah. sprint series. Um, at Haydock, testing going, some stats for the Peter Marsh chase. Um, only one horse carrying more than 11 stone three has won this in the last eight years. That's now a great there's step. heavy going tomorrow. There's only five horses that are carrying less than that, and two and two of them are priced quite short. The two joint favourites are in there, but I really like the look of Oscar Gogo and the Sawyer, both around 10 to one. Just can't see how you don't get I think paid each way. I think it's a great call, Alan. Yeah, I think it's a great call. The Sawyer as well. The, the trainers in cracking yeah. form yeah. and uh, very consistent. I, good but has managed up. not to go up too high in the yeah. weights. Yeah, and well. I think that I, 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 when you say it's heavy there, I mean you need a snorkel and a wetsuit at Haydock tomorrow <laughs> if you're riding there. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, that'd be funny to see. Um, that's your horse racing done, I think. Uh, let's move on to the Australian Open tennis. And our man who's absolutely all over it, although sadly not in the right way in week one, is Nigel Seeley. Nigel, what's gone wrong? Uh, nothing. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the problem is, is all the favourites are winning. I mean, and that, that seems to be the same thing in, uh, in, in tennis betting. Every time you get to the first week and all the favourites go free, the bookmakers always struggle. I mean, as, a, as for 10 years, I was a tennis trader with IG along with Channers there. And if you got to the first week of a major Grand Slam and you had, and you, you had any money in your satchel, you've done well. It's where you get in the second half where everyone comes out to play in the big matches and get two-way trade. And what I like to do is I like to find people around about five to four, six to four, that kind of price, who I think should be even money or should be, should be slight favourites. And um, the ones I've sort of gone through, gone to five sets. I've had to go options to trade out, but it's something that I, I don't look like like to do because I think if I fancy them at the beginning, I should fancy them if they're two sets all. But um, just quickly, and I Nigel, has gone my way. Well, you can turn it around, of course. So just quickly, take us through the men's draw. We've got the prices on screen at the moment. Uh, they look reasonably uniform, although Sporting Bet are nine to two about Federer and Blue Square seven to two, which is a little bit interesting. Yeah, I mean, Federer's obviously had a couple of injuries coming into the tournament, but he's shown no sign of that. But saying that, he's been 100 to 1 on against everybody he's played, so he's got all the business to do in the second part of the week. The same with Nadal. Nadal's had an injury, but Nadal looked very, very good last night, really, really well. Uh, he played a guy called Lacco, and he beat him convincingly in straight sets. Very, very impressive. But Djokovic has been absolutely awesome. Uh, the top half of the draw, to me, looks the, the easier half of the draw. So Djokovic has in my all intents and purposes, got to play Murray in the semi-finals if it all goes well. You know, the, the men's tennis has is, is become very predictable, unlike the women's, which used to be the other way around. And the top four seat, the top four seats should get through to the to semi-finals. But Channers put up last week Del Potro. He's playing exceptionally well. Looks to be playing Federer in the quarterfinals. And he never, he, he never, he hasn't got supported at all, Nigel. He's going to play Federer in the quarterfinal, but. He, he never shortens. He wins every match and he never shortens. Well, you've got, no one's getting beat, are they, Challenge? You need, you need, yeah. you need, one, of the, you need one of the big favourites to go. And then but we bet him at 16-1 to 1 last week. You can get 33s now. Yeah, well, the same thing. And he's playing well. And, and he is, is playing well. He will, be, he will be around about a 3-1 to one shot, 7-2 to two shot against Federer. And he will take a set of Federer. He will definitely take a set. He's got a brilliant head set record. And if, and if he gets off early, Federer can, can't come back anymore. So he will be... A, he's an absolute magical bet in, the, in, the, in that match. But... I think I think that Federer could struggle in his match before that against Tomic, the uh, the young Australian kid. I think that could be a bit of a test for him. But if they do play each other, that will be a, that will be the bet and a half back in a decent price in the match. And just quickly, Nigel, on the women's side, anything to flag up for us? We'll have a quick well, look this, at the this odds. This is much more interesting in the, in the men's. I mean, it's I don't know what price the guys are there, but I've seen four to one, three different favourites. It's quite it's it's very well open. I mean. I fancy Kvitova all the way through, but she wasn't very convincing in her third round uh, match before she got to three sets. But saying that, I, I like to see uh, girls who have played three set games going into the latter stages in the second week. But you know, I don't, you don't want to be winning six nil, six one, six nil because it doesn't come when you've got the testing games. You want to be you've been in a mood of a fight. So Azarenko has been the most popular. She's she's been absolutely awesome, but she's got temperament problems. And she always fails to deliver. She always gets to the semi-final. So I think that just on the first week, she's a false price. And I can't believe that Kvitova has got bigger from the start. I mean, she's a cracking bet. And, and the other one, I, 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 I'm, and if you excuse the pun, but I do fancy her quite strongly, is Sharapova. I think she's got a, a fantastic chance. I mean, she's going back to her best 
She's around about 14 to 1. She, when she gets the serve going, she's a match for anybody. And she's looking quite convincing in the opposite half of the draw. So for me, Sharapova and Kvitova. But I can't see past Djokovic. And, I, and I'm a layer of Federer if he gets against uh, Del Potro into the quarterfinal we want to see. Great stuff. Uh, Alan, any money or market moves? Just very quickly before we go. I was going to ask Nigel a question. Um, a, a few years ago, pinpointed that some of the later matches on Australian time are going to five sets because the temperature of the court uh, and it affects the speed of the ball. Is, was that total rubbish? Has is it, is it been borne out this year? Uh, I, I've only just remembered it. I, I don't know whether or not it is something that's been borne out every year. Uh, I, I think it could be more to do with the crowd behind the players. I think, I think temperature, it also depends on the matchup. I mean, if you've got a first round match, it's Federer against someone. They tend to put the, the most competitive games on. Of the last that's games. a good point. Yeah. So, yeah, so good it's point. going to be it's going to be longer games. It's nothing to do with the temperature. I mean, the game they put on today was uh, Dog Palova against Tomic. It was five to six to pair. No surprise, he's gone to five sets. Mm. They don't put Federer on first because he's one to five hundred to win a game. So who was that uh, player? Dog Palova. Is it the Kopolov? The Kopolov. That's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Nigel, thanks so much. That's great stuff. Ross, you got a view, I mean. Yeah, I mean, just, just to create some of there, Nigel, obviously, but just on the women's side of the draw here, I mean, obviously, we mentioned last week that we've got a particularly aggressive tennis trader. Um, one match here that's, uh, you know, really on the radar, I think, from the, the, and the punt is all about information and they is uh, Lee Nair is playing Kim Kleisters. Okay. We were just uh, doing a little bit of a prep, as we always do for the punt, of course, very, uh, very in depth preparation. That's it, for commitment. This beforehand. And, um, <laughs> Uh, Dominic suggests to me, our trader, that this is a pick 'em game, five to six each or two. Hadn't priced up yet. Apparently, four to nine, close to seven to four. Lena is uh, are the betting. That betting will definitely condense. Will probably fall more into line so and, and make it. But at the moment, on. you'd have to suggest that that Lena is a better seven so to four. There we are. Jump on Lena. Not literally, that would be a criminal <laughs> offence. Uh, let's take a break. After the break, we'll do some little bit of NFL and then we'll get some really good punting picks from our professionals. Stay with us. Welcome back. It's been a great show, some great advice and still more to come as we get to our professionals picks. But first of all, we're quickly going to dive into some NFL because it's the conference finals, uh, the round before the Super Bowl. And uh, I'm going to talk to Neil about it. I'm going to try not to grin too much because we both had a very successful weekend last weekend. <laughs> um, 49ers did very well for us, didn't they? they we were... loved it. Yeah, that was great. I mean, uh, I, I, I still like the 49ers, Nick. I mean, I, I backed them throughout the game. Uh, Green Bay started to look a bit shaky and I thought the best way to oppose Green Bay was to back the 49ers to win the Super Bowl. Who were Bowl already through. Yeah. They were already through and, you know, playing the Giants was going to be, the perception was going to be that was going to be a lot uh, easier than playing Green Bay. Amazing. 20 to 1 in a place before the games yesterday and now indeed. 100 yeah. to 30. And I, 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 to be honest, I think 100 to 30 is a fair bet. Okay. Uh, I, would, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be looking to, uh, to hedge in any way. I, I would be more inclined to press. Yeah. OK, let's uh, get into the game. So first mm. of all, the AFC is uh, New England and Baltimore. OK, let's talk about the AFC because I, I, regular viewers may, if they've been concentrating, note that they I have. know very little about most sports. Uh, but I do know about gambling and I know that the way to make money in the NFL uh, is to go against public opinion. Uh, Baltimore um, stank the place up last week. They were terrible. Yeah. I mean, they're awful. They won. Uh, they beat the Houston Texans, who were really unlucky. Um, and New England, um, well, they were super impressive, weren't they? They absolutely ran over poor old Tim Tebow uh, and the Denver Broncos, and the game was pretty much done by half time. And Neil, just, just for mm. people that are getting into NFL betting, just yeah. explain betting with the points and. and okay, so points. this game, New England are the favourites by seven. Uh, both teams are 10 to 11. Obviously, if we just did a, a fixed odds who's going to win the game, well, you can see it on the caption. It's kind of uh, three to one on and three to one is uh, uh, really 75%, 25% chance of these teams winning. Uh, so to make it more equitable so that there's a nice even spread of money, uh, we have a handicap. The handicap is seven. Uh, do you think New England will win the game uh, by more than seven? Well, you bet the minus seven at 10 to 11. Do you think Baltimore will either win or keep it close? Well, if you think that, you bet Baltimore so plus the, seven. If the, if, if, if if the, the score comes 17, in seven, seven yeah, uh, everyone just gets their money back. Okay. Uh, some bookmakers will be going seven and a half um, in this game. Uh, and if you are going to back Baltimore, you should chop around for that seven and a half because 10% uh, of the time, uh, this game will fall on seven. And you like Baltimore in this game? 
Uh, I like Baltimore with because I think New England are overrated. Mm -hmm. uh, they haven't beaten a team with a winning record this year, uh, or not too much. Uh, maybe one. I, no, I don't remember think, now. Don't uh, they've that. been doing, you know, the, all the stats uh, in terms of betting stats, spread stats, uh, go to Baltimore. Uh, Baltimore was so bad last week, and New England were very impressive against very weak opposition. Uh, and that's totally factored and into the this prices. Is, this, is, this has a wider ramification, doesn't it, apart from mm. American football, which is that the public very often is influenced by things that happened last week. Aren't Recent they, events. I, Recent I, I'd, events. Agree, I'd agree Absolutely with that as well. And, sure. and I think, I think the, the key to this game is the fact that New England scored the 45 points against Denver. People know that Tom Brady and this offence can just rack up points. And traditionally, Neil, you'd probably agree that Baltimore have got this fantastic defence that over the years. They yeah. probably could. Well, the other thing we're saying, you know, we're saying about the, the way that you bet in NFL is how handicap system, it, the idea being that uh, the bookie chappies uh, take half of the money on each team and just keep 5% uh, of uh, whatever they cop for. 68% mm. um, of the money so far this week has been for New England in this wow. game. And I'd expect uh, on game day, which is when most of the money gets bet uh, in the hour before kickoff, public money's uh, just going to go. It's going to be 88% to New England. Okay. I could see Baltimore ending up, uh, you could get eight points. And uh, to me, that's good. just a great bet. Great stuff, and it's so much fun to bet on, guys. You've really got to get involved. If it, only just for fun and an interest, it's fantastic because your interest often lasts right to the end of the game. Whoever's winning, it's brilliant. And just very quickly on the NFC side, you have to spin through this one. Okay, well, um, San Francisco opened up a one point favourite. Uh, you know, it was kind of a harder game to price up because they weren't really expecting this to happen. You know, most people thought Green Bay were going to go through. San Francisco open up one point, they've got to two and a half. I personally priced it at two and a half straight away. But three is such a key number. 15% of the time this game's going to finish on three. So if you are going to back San Francisco, make sure you get them minus two and a half, not minus three. Uh, and if you're going to back New York, get them plus three. Uh, you should be able to get those prices if you shop around. Uh, I'm, I'm personally think if, I, if I'm having a bet here, it's going to be San Francisco minus two and a half. And you can pretty much guarantee I will be having a bet here. Well, let's, uh, let's <laughs> lightly segue into your bets because uh, mm. your charity picks have, well, they've turned the corner as you've turned the corner. Yeah, it's looking better for the kids. And, <laughs> uh, you know, they've still got Sunderland in the FA Cup to, uh, to really <laughs> smash them out of it. Um, so, so, and Del Potro, of course, we, we haven't, that one hasn't settled yet. Yeah, so um, last week you had the Niners to mm. beat the Saints and that was the big bet and that came in handsomely yeah, yeah. in an extraordinary an exciting game. Yeah, somehow at the bottom there, I seem to have South, Al South End to beat Cheltenham, uh, which uh, that's I, a gremlin in the machine. Bet. That Don't is a gremlin about in it. the machine. That was uh, you might want it next week though. So let's not, yeah. let's not get rid of it. Uh, so yeah, that was last week. Yeah, yeah. it was pretty good yeah. last week. The Niners was very good. This is this week anyway. So oh, okay. I'm I'm, I'm going to have 220 on the Niners to beat the Giants. Um, I just think the Giants are more of a public team in the states. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, they were very impressive, whereas the Niners kind of battled through in a kind of more gritty performance. Wishful thinking each way, um, I, I'm having 100 each way of my charity money at six to one. I believe you can still get 13 to two if you shop around. Uh, it might be a bit harder to get. And Blackburn to beat Everton, uh, we've come up with this ridiculous, that must be a sporting bet price, 21 to 4. <laughs> Whoever uses that, I think you can, get six, force, classic. you can get 6 to 1 uh, without having to struggle too hard. So um, uh, try and get yourself 6 to 1. I think, I think it's a massive price, that Blackburn against Everton. OK. Uh, Nigel, what are your picks? Anything we haven't covered so far this week that you want to flag up for people? Well, there's, there's two bets in the, uh, in the Premier League that I quite like the look of. One of them is in the, uh, in the QPR Wigan game. Uh, it's the biggest game for the, both clubs, arguably, this season. Um, QPR have only scored nine goals at home. Wigan have only scored eight goals away. In the seven matches between the two teams' history, there's only been 11 goals. And you can back under two and a half goals in the match at five to six. I've been to five QPR games this season, and I haven't seen them score one goal, and I'm going tomorrow. So there you go, that's all you need to know. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the other one I like is I like, I like Stoke even money to beat West Brom. I think West Brom are a side in desperate trouble. Stoke have, are unbeaten in the last 18 home matches against, uh, against uh, West Brom. And West Brom are a team that gonna, can't score goals again. They're going to get sucked into the relegation battle. They're, they're decimated by injuries, West Brom, for tomorrow. Well, and also... And Stoke got uh, even money. I think a great bet. Also, Roy Hodgson started doing the pulling bits off his face on the sideline thing. <laughs> so, you know, they're in a lot of trouble. Thanks so much, Nigel. Um, we've got to no check problem. in with uh, Gordon Watson Flash and get his five. You'd be mad if uh, we didn't because yeah. he's on awesome form. Uh, Flash, are you there? I'm good, Jack. Uh, run us through your five this week, please. People are dying to know. <laughs> West Ham and Forest. Uh, Forest are absolutely in dire straits uh, for uh, as a home win. Although West Ham have struggled this season, I, I see them uh, win that game. Huddersfield 
home to uh, to Brentford. Uh, again, I think it's pretty straightforward. Carlisle at home to Walsall. Carlisle in great form at the moment. Scoring goals. Uh, got the French boy up front. I think he scores over seven in nine. Sheffield Wednesday at home to Hartlepool. And Gillingham at home to AFC Wimbledon. Fantastic. And if they all came in, roughly, what were we, what were we paying? Uh, yeah, around about 12, 13 to so, so hopefully uh, that'll be good. Fantastic. Fast, we got uh, I'd just like to say, boys, uh, get on the Patriots. <laughs> Marvellous. Knee, knee deep <laughs> on the Patriots. <laughs> Thank you so much, Fast. Great yeah. stuff. Um, chaps, what else have we got? Yeah, Russ, just, you've got... Just to keep it a nice broad range of sports here, uh, Nick, we'll just stick to that tennis bet. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously this is coming straight from the horse's mouth. Definitely our trader knows what he's doing here. You're going to get great value. The price will move as well if you back Lena to beat Kim Kleisters in the tennis over the weekend. Lena, she is uh, the one to be on. And Alan, you've got some football tips for us. Yeah, football tips. Uh, Manchester United to beat Arsenal, as I've said. Frank Lampard to score at any time. If you want one in the Blue Square Bet Premier, I think Gateshead are a huge price to beat. Uh, woefully out of form, Lincoln. And in the racing, I have to go for Al Farov. And in the Peter Marsh, the Sawyer and Oscar Gogo each way. Fantastic stuff. Uh, I, think, I think we've covered everything. It's very, very impressive. Um, hopefully everyone does as well this week as they did last week and Nigel joins the club. That would be lovely, wouldn't it? Yes, uh, where are you going to be this weekend? Ask it for me tomorrow, uh, Nick. Normally it's been football lately, but it's going to be Ask it tomorrow. Great race this. has got Cheltenham ramifications, so I'll be, I'll be there and uh, looking forward to it. Actually, it should be good. Al? I'll be joining Russ there at Ascot. Oh, that'd be lovely. And we'll be on the sofa. I'll be clicking buttons Nick. together. The worst, yeah. the worst yeah, yeah. possible thing that could happen this week is BT Internet goes down. <laughs> well, what, what, most important thing for me is to not lose seven quid to Neil. Summers be versus Richmond. We'll, we'll worry about that later. Only, se uh, only, mythical, only seven quid mythical. on it. A <laughs> mythical seven quid. That's exactly right. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have the, this week, everybody. Uh, fantastic advice. Go and watch the show again. It's really been great. Uh, more from us next week. More quality advice. Enjoy your sporting weekend. And we'll see you again soon on The Punter.